Wholesale prices in the U.S. rose three-tenths of a percent in November. That's according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which released the Producer Price Index report earlier today. Javier David is here with us now for more analysis. He's a CBS News contributor and the managing editor of business and markets at Axios. Always great to have you here. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. Right. So just to start off with, you know, what does this producer price index report signal for the overall health of our economy? Well, it signals that perhaps this time around we can believe that we have hit a peak in inflation. Perhaps. And I say use the word perhaps because okay, we, okay. we've had a number of sort of false starts. And every time we start to believe that inflation is moderated, right. we get an ugly surprise. And all of this plays into kind of what we're seeing in markets. Um, investors positioning themselves for, you know, hope against hope that the Federal Reserve will slow down. Uh, the Fed meets next week. They render another interest rate decision next week. They'll be the ultimate judge about whether or not they're pleased with the numbers. And that in consideration with the jobs data that we saw last week, which was on its face very strong, mm -hmm. um, we're hoping, again, that's their word, hope, that we'll finally get um, a little bit of pause um, in the fight against inflation. Two percent, two percent, two percent, two percent. But we're, no, we're um, nowhere near that. So apparently, there's some uh, Bank of uh, America strategists um, mm -hmm. that are, say that there's one factor that the stock market can sort of lean on to make us sort of feel bullish about the stock market moving into the next year. W what is that factor? What, what are they talking about? The factor is uh, again sort of uh, the interest rates mm -hmm. and the hope that uh, the Federal Reserve will. Well, the, the Federal Reserve, let's just put it out there, is going to continue to raise interest rates mm -hmm. regardless. But what markets are hoping is that the pace of hikes will slow. So right. what we're hoping for next week or what markets are hoping for next week is a 50 percent, maybe even at some point, 25 percent, mm -hmm. uh, because we're still very, very concerned about uh, what the um, economy will look like yeah. next year. And if there's a recession, that means the Fed is going to have to put it in reverse. And that's kind of what most strategists are expecting. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of a recession, many investors already think we're in one or mm -hmm. we're very close mm -hmm. to one. So, you know, what do the markets tell us? And looking ahead, mm -hmm. what are the predictions for 2022, 2023? The jury's still out. Like we, in terms of whether or not we can legitimately say that we are in a formal recession, uh, we mm -hmm. still haven't gotten that call from the arbiters who make these sorts of decisions. Uh, but the smart money says a recession, if we're not already in one, is certainly coming next year. Uh, consumer demand, I think, has been um, extraordinarily healthy, uh, given all of what we've seen. Uh, but businesses like are starting to the hiring picture is slowing down uh, dramatically if you're in the tech sector. Uh, but there are still jobs out there. There's still sufficient demand. People are still making money. They're still spending money. Um, so it's very difficult to tell. But we are at this juncture where we do believe that uh, something bad is coming. Um, okay, before we let you go, I got to ask you about crypto. We've had mm, obviously right. this spectacular <laughs> end to F FTX, Everybody wants right? To talk about crypto. Yeah, and yeah, and I was like, mm. this could be the beginning of the end because there is a domino effect. Um, a lot of these exchanges are sort of interconnected. Mm. Um, so let me ask you. Uh, uh, so according to a new report from Naxis. I hope I said that properly. 73% of institutional investors say crypto is not appropriate for most individuals. I don't think that should be surprising, <laughs> no, right? No, it's not. No, it's not. no. It wasn't appropriate before. It's <laughs> even less appropriate now, I presume. Yeah, that is correct. I mean, crypto is in a real crisis of confidence. Yeah. This was a system that was created as an alternative to what we call traditional finance, mm -hmm. like, you know, credit cards, paper money, debit cards, et cetera, et cetera. This was supposed to be different. Now we're finding out it's not so much. It's prone to some of the same sort of chicanery, uh, fraud, yeah. mismanagement, uh, self-dealing that we see in other sectors. And it's, again, it's, a, it's an even bigger problem because it was a new sector and it had a lot of true believers. And a lot of those true believers are small investors who I know a couple who actually put money in some of the small, not even Bitcoin, but like mm. some of the smaller meme coin type mm -hmm. things Not and, lost coin. A, and lost a lot of money. Mm. And people are still, if you're a customer of FTX, they, you, you park money with them, you may not be able to get it out. Uh, this is a real issue. And if I go to a bank and a bank is having trouble, I can still access my money. Mm -hmm. In crypto, there are a number of these platforms that are struggling and are not allowing people to customers to withdraw funds. That's a real problem. If I can't get my money when I want it, yeah. 
this is, yeah, I, I'm not happy. Yeah, that's yeah. I, I, to me, it's just a grand irony. This, this is supposed to operate outside of these traditional structures, but then everyone's running to traditional structures mm -hmm. to try and get their money back, right? Well. They're filing lawsuits. <laughs> like, it, it, can't, it can't work mm. independently. Not yet, anyway. Yeah, seem not like yet. It. And then yeah. I think that that's the real takeaway here, that yeah. crypto's just not ready for prime time. That doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily mean that it never will be, but this is a real black eye that's set the industry back um, years. Listen, no one's least. been able to explain it to me in a way that I truly understand. <laughs> and I really wonder mm. how many people really understand. Crypto. Very few people do. Exactly. And it was, yeah, I mean, that, I think that the thing, it was, the, the attraction of it was sort of the fast money, the excitement, yeah. the fact that it wasn't really regulated. Yeah. But that caught up with everybody. Yeah, so true. Uh, Javier, David, always great talking to you. Yeah. Have a good weekend. Thank you. You too.